Aloha, I'm Mahina Florence, and welcome to Hawaii, more specifically, the island of Oahu. I grew up here, and I'm excited to share some of the places that have played a major part in not only the history of surfing as a whole, but in the lives of those of us who call Oahu home. We'll start on the west side of Oahu, specifically Makaha, to meet with some iconic women whose roots run deep on the leeward side. From there, we'll head to North Shore, which needs little introduction. Finally, we'll spend some time in Waikiki, the birthplace of surf school, and learn a bit more about how tradition there is tightly woven into life on the island today. Early accounts of the origin of surfing range from Africa to South America to Polynesia. But it's undeniable that the islands of Hawaii have played a very special and singular role in the history, growth, and development of the sport. The thing is, surfing in Hawaii has always been more than that. Long before it ever became the sport many know it as today, Hawaiians were riding waves and surfing was a key part of the thriving culture. Stories and traditions of which were passed down from generation to generation. Surfing was for all reaches of society and it was a vehicle for community, identity, and belonging. Colonial forces that arrived in the late 1700s all but stamped out the act of surfing for almost a century when surfing, along with many other Hawaiian traditions, were more or less forbidden. Fortunately, the Hawaiian connection to the sea was stronger than the other forces at work, and eventually, surfing's popular resurgence through tourism and the birth of surf school in Waikiki marked the slow turning point of returning surf culture to Hawaiians who introduced it to much of the Western world in the first place. Surfing in Hawaii has always been many things, but at the bottom of it all, it's a way of life, a strengthening of existing ties, a way to make new ones, and a way to always feel at home. We headed over to the west side of Oahu to Makaha to meet up with the one and only Ha'a Keolana. Ha'a embodies what it means to be a water woman. For generations, the Keolanas have been contributing to and helping define Hawaiian surf history. Granddaughter of respected Hawaiian watermen, Buffalo Keolana, and daughter of the legendary big wave surfer, Brian Keolana, Ha'a carries the legacy onwards. Being born and raised in my family, especially starting from my grandparents, they always embraced our Hawaiian culture, especially with connecting to the ocean. My grandfather was raised in the days where we weren't allowed to speak our native tongue. So I think he always found his identity with being a Hawaiian through connecting with the ocean, which is from fishing, diving, surfing. That's where he always felt like his true self. And I think that's why my family always embraced our love for the ocean. Whether she's charging solid makaha, shooting photos off of the back of the ski at outer reefs, or yes, even working as a stunt woman. In many ways and to many people, Ha'a gracefully bridges the gap between past and current generations in Hawaii, be it through her surfing or her photography, both of which she's known for, and not just in Hawaii, but around the world. Being able to surf today gives me so much pride, especially as a Native Hawaiian woman. It makes me feel like I'm reclaiming something that was once taken away from us. Her love, passion, and respect for the land and ocean that have raised her is tangible, and her prowess in or on the water serves as an inspiration for many. There's something very special and deep about surfing that most people can say they can relate to. So it's really cool to meet people from all over the world that share the same love. Here 
here in Hawaii, we aloha aina. A form of aloha aina will be to pick up your opala. It wouldn't be a trip to Makaha without catching up with Alessa. Alessa Holloway, formerly Kwazan, has made a name for herself as a professional surfer since she was 12 years old and is part of the tight-knit community that calls Makaha home. I was so blessed to grow up on this side, especially because of how authentic the people are, the rawness. Like, you know, it's, it's very humble here. When I was traveling growing up, um, they always did ask, like, oh, where are you from? And they'll be asked, oh, what part? And I'm like, oh, I'm from the west side. Like, oh, west side, that's cool. So, you, oh, you know everyone, and like, you know the Keolanas, and all that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, my neighbors, yeah. And, like, and then they knew my dad. I was like, oh, I know your dad. He's cool, too. So it was like, you know, it's kind of cool, like, how they'll talk about other people from my side. And it's just great to see, like, how even, like, someone can touch their lives from the same place, and they're, like, a million miles away. So it's, it's pretty cool. really do owe um, everyone that I grew up with here, everyone that supported me here in Makaha, the whole west side, like I owe them everything because without that love and the inspiration, I feel like I wouldn't be that strong person that I am today. The North Shore of Oahu is known for turning out some of the best competitive surfers in the world, and Luana Silva is no exception. At only 17 years old, Luana has officially qualified for the 2022 World Surf League's Champion Tour of Surfing and is showing no signs of slowing anytime soon. Luana's parents moved to the North Shore from Brazil with the exact intentions of raising their family in a place where spending time in the ocean would be second nature. Luana is a fierce competitor with the kind of drive and talent that it takes to make it as a world champion. You have to be like, have a lot of mental strength I feel like now, because going on the road for so long is so hard, and having a good team behind you always helps. But under all of that is a deep love for the sea and appreciation for the famed shoreline she calls home. I think surfing is such a beautiful thing to do and learn. It's so different from any other sport. We always have to rely on mother nature. It's not like basketball where there's a court and like you know where the hoops are. Like surfing, you don't always know where the wave is gonna be and where you have to be to catch the wave. Going surfing and going in the ocean is very therapeutic for me. Um, it always has been, it always calms me down and just settles my mind a lot. There's no way to speak to surfing in Hawaii without understanding the importance of Waikiki. Waikiki is one of the most famous beaches in the world. Never short of spectacles, the beaches of Waikiki hold a much deeper history in the archives of surfing than most people know when they first step foot onto the sand. So right where we are standing, this is where the first original Waikiki Beach Boys used to take their visitors and share that same aloha spirit like Duke Hanamoku had. The world's best watermen at the time were right here, right in front where we are. To learn more about the role that surf schools and the community of Waikiki plays in how surfing is taught to the masses, we met up with Tammy Moniz. The Moniz family and their two surf schools in Waikiki are without a doubt an anchor in the ever-changing landscape that is Waikiki. The beauty of Waikiki as a local is it becomes kind of a, your playground, you know, just your, your place, you bring your family and you don't spend two hours there, you spend the whole day there. Back in the days when Duke Hanamoku and, you know, the first Beach Boy days, like that's what they did. They just, they were just playing, you know, there was no such thing as a Beach Boy job or, a, you know, surf school. They just surfed because it's part of their life and their lifestyle. And it turned into that when the Moana rose up and people started coming to visit the islands and they stood there and watched these guys ride, ride the waves and they wanted to try it. And like, you know, locals do, they just say, hey, come, let me show you. To understand surfing as a sport is one thing, but to understand surfing as a culture and as a, and as a love 
and something that you know we're going to do for the rest of our life. It's probably the one thing, as old as I am, I, I will want to continue to do and will keep me inspired and fresh. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't come to the beach and just go, oh my gosh, I can't believe we get to do this, that this is, this is a place that we are given to be a steward of and to pass down our love for surfing, the culture, and aloha. In Hawaii, we call this a va'a. There is a resiliency and a beauty to surfing in Hawaii. A strength and tradition that has outlived attempts of erasure. Being a surfer here has given us all a sense of belonging. A sense of belonging that we can carry with us wherever we go. Be it the other side of the island or the other side of the world. We will never take for granted what being a part of this ocean community has given us. And most importantly, we want to share a surfing culture. We don't want to change the culture because that's what's so beautiful about it. It doesn't need to be changed. <laughs>